All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the problem two to the power of 101 minus two to the power of 100. So to solve this problem, I'm gonna first start by rewriting two to the power of 101 as two to the power of 100 plus one. Now, the reason I did that is because now I can use this property that states that if I have something from a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 100. Now from here, I can factor out 2 to the power of 100. So I get 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm left with 2 to the power of 100 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back to the problem, I have 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. Now, before, I rewrote 101 as 100 plus 1, but how about I rewrite 100 as 101 minus 1? So now I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 minus 1. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100 and 1 plus negative 1. Now if I use that property again that states that a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And now if I factor out 2 to the power of 101, I get 2 to the power of 101 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 1 half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. So that's the second method of solving this problem. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of four is equal to 64. So the variable I wanna find the value to in this equation is x. And for my solution, I'm gonna first start by taking the power of four on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of four to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. However, m and n are interchangeable, meaning this can also be written as a to the power of n to the times m. Now, if a t to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this should be equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So x to the power of x to the power of 4 to the power of 4. In this, I can think of x to the power of 4 as m and 4 as n. So this turns into x to the power of 4 to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now 64 to the power of 4 I can rewrite as 8 squared to the power of 4, which turns into 8 to the power of 8. Now if I have something from a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, x to the power of 4 is equal to 8. And to solve for x, I'm going to take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to positive or negative fourth root of eight. 
All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the problem 500 squared minus 499 squared. So to solve this, what I'm first gonna do is rewrite this as 499 plus one squared minus 499 squared. And If I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So 499 plus 1 squared is turned into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. And I have this minus 499 squared. Now, I can cancel out 499 squared and negative 499 squared, so I'll be left with 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. 2 times 499 is 998, times 1 is just 998, and I have this plus 1 squared, which is plus 1, and this is equal to 999. Now, I actually have another method of solving this. So I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. And this time, I'm going to rewrite this as 500 squared minus 500 minus 1 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a minus b times a minus b, which is equal to if I factor the, this out, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus b squared, which is one squared. So these two cancel out. However, this is actually going to be in parentheses. So the negative sign distributes. So this turns into 500 squared minus 500 squared plus two times 500 times one, which is the same thing as two times 500 minus one squared. Now these two can cancel out, so I get 1,000 minus 1, which is equal to 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 3 to the power of x is equal to 30. So, to solve this equation, I'm going to start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log of 3 to the power of x is equal to log of 30. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times log a. In this case, I have log 3 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 3 is equal to log 30. Now that x is an actual term, I can solve for it by getting rid of this log 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by log 3. So then these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to log 30 over log 3. Now, log 30, I'm going to rewrite that as log of 3 times 10. And if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of 3 times 10 is equal to log 
3 plus log 10. Now I have this over log 3. So now this is equal to log 3 over log 3 plus log 10 over log 3. Now log 3 and log 3, these two cancel out, so I get x equals 1 plus log 10 over log 3. And log 10 is 1, so I get x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 3. Now 1 over log 3 is equal to 2.096. So x is equal to 3.096.